So what is the Internet of Things? Well, most of you might be thinking of your car, your phone, and even your fridge, all connected to the internet getting regular firmware updates. Your fridge could know when you're about to be out of milk, order you new milk from Amazon, and have it delivered to your door even before you need it. And you would be right, in part. But the Internet of Things don't just include electronic devices. It includes all things. Even animals can benefit. Even some cows are fitted with a biochip in their shoulder that notifies the farmer when they're in heat via SMS text message. Hmm, I mean, you've got to be wondering what that would look like, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh, oh, wait, wait. Notification coming in. Oh, yeah. Bull, bull, that heifer, she's in heat. She wants your babies. Go get her done. Oh, bull, gentle now, slow down, bull, oh, oh, man, oh, oh that poor heifer. <laughs>Welcome back XD crowd, my name is Jace, and today we're not just going to talk about cows and heat, no, we are going to talk about the Internet of Things and what new opportunities that means for you. For many people are calling this the next frontier of the Internet, or the gold rush of the Internet. So let's talk about just how big of a thing it really is. So according to Intel, there will be some 31 billion connected devices by the year 2020. And currently a family of four on average has 10 connected devices. By year 2022, that is going to be upwards of 50 connected devices per household. And for something a little more current, by next year, 2014, mobile subscriptions will exceed the number of people on the planet. So all those people and all those devices are generating data, right? It's big, it's huge, but that is just really the tip of the iceberg when you consider the following. Now, when you consider the estimated 4,000 exabytes of data that's currently being generated or has been generated over the past 100 years, this has been generated by human beings via keyboards or uh, by us creating our own video. But we're human beings with limited time and resources, and we consider 4,000 exabytes to be big data. Imagine when everything we interact with is connected and has an ISP uh, address and is uh, has the uh, M2M technology, that's machine to machine technology, and each day and hour generating new data, the amount becomes just more than our human minds can comprehend. And this is where, if you've been watching these videos and you call yourself a problem solver and not just a programmer or an IT pro, you will know where the real value is. There's a fantastic video that I've linked in the show notes below that goes into this much more deeper, but it likens the data of the Internet of Things to a pyramid, and at the bottom of the pyramid is just the raw data, and it's huge. It's just colossal. And for IT pros who process that data, that becomes raw information. But it is the gods of the Internet of Things who will have the understanding and and wherewithal to generate that information into useful wisdom. You wake up in the morning via your alarm clock, but your alarm clock is set at a time that it's decided because it's connected and it knows when your first meeting is in the morning. By the time you get to the bath, your water heater has been shut off all night, but started heating up water a half hour before you were to wake up because it knows how to economize on your water heat. By the time you get to your car, your car has notified you that there's been a water main break on your favorite highway, and so it deters you to the next fastest route. But by the time you get there, your phone has notified you that your ferry is late, and so you can have breakfast early, etc., etc., etc. The greatest opportunities are for people who work in uh, cloud computing, uh, system architects, database architects, people who design systems that can sift through all this data, through this information, and make sense of it, make practical use of it to the non techie people. That is where the greatest opportunity is. The other added skill that will be needed in the Internet of Things is soft 
skills. This was mentioned in the uh, articles that I linked below, and it was something I hadn't really thought of before. You see, as it stands right now, most people who have to use a smartphone or a desktop computer, anytime something technically goes wrong, they have to call someone else to get help for them. They're not very tech savvy. Most of the world is not tech savvy like you or I, and so they end up calling people like you or me. And that's going to be much more so when almost everything we touch or interact with has an added tech uh, layer or element to it. They're going to need people who can explain the practical use of it. Why do we actually need this to be web enabled? For example, my mother watches my Facebook page when I post uh, pictures of uh, her grandkids. But she's always saying to me, Jace, can I print these out somehow? Print these out for me. And my question is, that, why would you want them printed out? When you have photos, you share them, you look at them, you use them. You can do that much easier now, uh, now that they're digitized. But sh to her, photos mean something she can hang up on her walls and look at. So I bought her a uh, digital picture frame. I'm sure you know what that is, right? Digital picture frame, you can, via USB, you can upload uh, multiple pictures and uh, the pictures fade out and rotate um, uh, on a regular basis so you're not just looking at the same photo. But each time I go to my mother's, it's nowhere to be found. It's in a box somewhere just because she can't be bothered uh, with the frustration entailed in, in uploading that for her. That might be simple for you or for me, but for her, that's just too much. She can't be bothered. But if it were web enabled, if it were part of the Internet of Things, I could put up on the wall and uh, upload and remove old photos remotely. And that is the kind of thing that helped my mother a lot. We need people who can explain that to people like my mother and explain the benefits of it and make it easy for them. So the need for uh, soft skills is going to be hugely important. In the one white paper, it was like three pages of why soft skills are going to be so important in the age of the Internet of Things. So guys, for today's recommendation, I'm talking about Code Avengers. You can go to CodeAvengers.com and learn JavaScript in the form of a game. Now, for those of you who've watched my shows for a long time, you're going to know that I've recommended that before. But what Michael Walmsley, the founder of Code Avengers, has done recently is he's added new courses for HTML5 and CSS. So if you're like me and you just loathe the traditional uh, classroom environment, this takes learning coding in a game format. I've taken uh, the Java modules myself and it was a lot of fun. It goes from really, really easy to really hard, but it is a video game. Check that out and let me know what you think in the comments below. I shall see you tomorrow.